I'm driving away from you. There's no such thing as gravitons. Bodies simply bend time and space into themselves. The more massive the bodies, the more pull they have. Bodies being massive means they are big and heavy. As I drive away, you are supposed to get smaller. We are both supposed to become to each other redder and smaller. There are unmassive parts of you, perhaps, that can swell wide as clouds while I wait for perspective to catch up. I dropped acid for the first time. Everything is everything, and I do not exist, and blah, blah, blah. What nobody told you about enlightenment is it's incredibly boring. I'll do the clay and hangnail tilt-a-whirl of knees and backbones and biceps. I'll do rainstorms and functional alcoholism and the smell of babies. Why do you think Avalokiteshvara and Vishnu and Jesus and spring and the sun keep coming back to the earth again and again? They are pulled by something big and heavy. The earth really revolves around the sun, because the latter is bigger and heavier and pulls more space and time into itself. That's not how it looks from our perspective. As far as I think I have driven away, I will always be coming up from the basement with cardboard excavated paperbacks of Faulkner, Shuang Tzu, Hafiz, snotty poetry journals, Winnie the Pooh, my friends on their independent presses, David Sedaris, Gertrude Stein, the Bhagavad Gita, I will always be hiding inside my bedroom on the first warm day of spring, assured and left alone. When things are big and heavy, we move away from them. Moving away from things makes us blue. It's hard to get humans to cooperate with science. We have these feelings. We can't explain them. Everything is getting slowly redder and colder. Everything is falling apart. There's something big and heavy we're being sucked into. Woo! Like slowly, slowly, kind of, whatever. Okay. <laughs> this is called uh, the real universe. It goes going down. God damn it! <laughs> is there a trick to this? Or? Sorry, I really don't. I mean, I can like project too. I have a diaphragm. Not the sexy kind. <laughs> okay, this is called, thank you, thank you, Sam. This is called the real universe. Contrary to popular wisdom, the universe actually did end on December 21st, 2012, just like the ancient Mayans predicted. But the universe that ended was the real universe, not the one of suns and math and moving parts, not the one people tend to walk around in. And so the thing is, Nobody noticed. Well, that's not entirely true. One of the Vatican's scientists noticed. He stumbled upon it by accident while verifying a claim of a miraculous appearance of the Virgin in the dental x-rays of a seven-year-old Venezuelan girl, but he could see no good coming from bringing it to anyone's attention. Some physicists noticed, too, as the real universe overlaps a little on the 7th and 13th dimensions, but they were ridiculed by their colleagues who had already suspected that their gluon plasmas were a few quarks short. A few Siddhas in Calcutta noticed, but of course they knew what to expect. They didn't really tell anyone about it, but they did all spontaneously advance to stage 2 in their yogic flying practices. A middle-aged stay-at-home mom in Minnesota noticed one day out digging in her garden and also suddenly found she could move physical objects with her mind. She mostly used this power to de-ice the gutters and play jokes on her kids at the dinner table. A handful of artists and poets noticed, but none of them were exceptionally talented and no one ever got what they were trying to say. <laughs> and of course, the Mayans noticed. But they don't count, and besides, the world hadn't noticed them for a couple hundred years at that point. So anyway, there were only like a hundred people total in the whole world who had any idea. Most people just didn't have the time. And time doesn't really make sense anyway when you get to the end of the universe. That's too bad, though. The ending was sadly beautiful and beautifully sad. It made you see what every diminished chord in every song is getting at. It made you believe in something, really. Not God, necessarily, whatever that means, but some sort of plan or meaning or maybe just beauty. I really wish you could have been there. And the nascent universe that budded from the resultant abyss 
like they do is perfect. So, so, so beautiful. I'm sorry. I wish there were better words to describe it to you. There just aren't. <laughs> Sam was talking, so I'm like kind of on tour. Um, mainly I'm here uh, promoting this book that I've been writing for the past year and a half about rock, the classic rock, rock icons of the 60s, so like the Beatles, Bob Dylan, the Stones, all those people, and how they resonate mythological archetypes, and that's sort of why they've become so idolized and iconic. And um, tomorrow we're filming a DVD that's going to go along with the book over at the Brava Theater of this <laughs> multimedia performance. Um, where we kind of lay out how the Beatles resonate the savior archetype. And it's over at, at the Bravo Theater tomorrow. Um, doors are at 7. It's free. Um, so we're just kind of trying to fill it up with cool, smart people. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll tell some if we see any. Yeah, if you see any. Um, I also have things that you can buy from me for donations. Like I have a book of poetry and a CD and a really cool t-shirt. And I'll probably sell it to you for any amount of money you want to give me. <laughs> um, okay, this is my last my last poem for you guys. Um, you're cool. Uh, this is called Twenty Six Excuses. Because your father is dead. Because we waited too long. Because my father never touched me. Because I drank too much. Because the only girl you ever really loved grew up in a fallout shelter. Because I was cold. Because these are not metaphors. Because your father used to smack you with a rolled up newspaper like a dog when you broke rules. Because this time is different. Because I almost died last winter in the ER. Because we acted without thinking. Because my legs are misassembled and sometimes I need to hang off of someone else to walk right. Because bodies are hard to stop once they're falling. Because I drank too much again. Because her name was Lydia. Because tomorrow I will see you at the coffee shop and we will hug like normal. Because it gets dark so early in November. Because I did not take your hand off of my thigh. Because your addiction reminds me of my father. Because you still try to stretch every woman you meet over her skeleton. Because it wouldn't work out. Because when I was little, I could make a home out of holy blankets and stuffed animals. Because the Beatles sang because. Because I didn't say no. Because your father died without telling you any of his secrets. Because a falling body alone does not make noise. Thank you.